Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis, and I want to talk about glycogen. Today I constantly receive emails and phone calls about what people perceive to be the importance of the glycogen content of their muscles and their liver. But before I do that piece, I want to discuss something else that is very important in understanding the concepts underlying glycogen metabolism. And this is a concept that's rarely talked about, even amongst lay people and amongst researchers. Most researchers simply are not aware of this and they conduct experiments all the time that are based on the idea that they can manipulate something in the diet to get an effect and see what that effect is and then report on that in the world scientific literature. And this is the idea that you can just go ahead and manipulate something starting today or maybe even tomorrow and that the results of that manipulation provide good information about what's actually happening. And that's false. That's just not true. That's, that's a major mistake. The important thing to understand is that any manipulation and the outcome of that manipulation is dependent upon the previous nutritional state within the animal or within the human. And this goes back not just a matter of days or even hours, but weeks and months long term. So to establish the true effect of any manipulation, one needs to set up the appropriate experiment within the framework of a background of understanding what the nutritional state was. Now this has been well known for a long, long time and has led to an endless amount of research papers that tell us absolutely nothing and all they do is confuse. And this is true for all the researchers. Now I've written extensively on this. We know, for example, that the high fat supermarket diet leads to obesity. This has been known for a long time and whenever you read the research on that topic, it's stated that a high fat diet will lead to obesity. This leaves too much out. A high fat diet is almost always high in carbohydrates. So the true statement is a high fat, high carbohydrate diet, also known as the supermarket diet, will lead to obesity. If you leave out the idea that the carbohydrate is high, you don't get a true idea of what diet actually does if it leads to obesity. Now what's been exciting over the last couple years, what's coming out, what's being shown, is that in fact a high fat, low carbohydrate diet will cause one to lose weight and fat. So it's that critical combination there that's important. Now if one has been consuming a high fat, high carbohydrate diet. Their body has been remodeled and structured to attend to that. The enzymatic pathways and all the other processes in the body have adapted themselves to the exposure of both high fat and high carbohydrate. And that sets up specific conditions that make any manipulation unrealistic based on that background. So if we wanted to find out what the effect of a high fat, low carbohydrate diet is, and we've been consuming a high fat, high carbohydrate diet, and we make the manipulation on a Monday, and look at the effect over say 24 hours, and measure whatever it is we want to measure in the body that we're looking at, whether they be hormonal levels like leptin or insulin, or a glucagon, or anything the researcher chooses to look at, will all be dependent upon the previous nutritional state, the outcome, the changes. So this study now is absolutely meaningless. It really tells us nothing because of this previous nutritional background. And this serves, as, as I said, as a source of massive misinformation and misunderstanding, which leaks out into the public, and everybody becomes completely confused. So it's just a major problem that really needs to be understood. So, for example, the 
enzymatic pathways in the nutritional profile that arises from consuming a low-carbohydrate diet is entirely different than what happens when one consumes a high-carbohydrate diet. This is where all the vegetarians, for example, get in trouble. They're leading, eating, for the most part, a high-carbohydrate diet, but they don't understand the underlying biochemistry. And that would solve a lot of the problems in the understanding. So they rave about the health benefits of a vegetarian diet, not announcing that for most of them who got really good results, they were living on a supermarket diet previous to this. They weren't living just on meat, so they want to blame meat for all the problems, but they weren't living on a meat diet. They were living on the standard American diet, which might be high in meat, but it's also high in carbohydrates and other things, other fruits and vegetables like that. So without understanding the basic biochemistry, that really has to serve as the basis of your interpretation. What's going on at the level of the cell? What kind of enzymatic changes occur? Because the enzymes in the cell determine your metabolic system, determine what happens metabolically to you. And that whole profile will change and adapt itself to the type of food that you eat over the long term. So this is very important in making any interpretation at all about the effect of manipulating your diet. I just read a paper the other day where they manipulated the diet and looked at changes in hormonal levels in response to this 24-hour shift. In fact, it was just even a shifting in meals. They, they looked at that, the changes that occurred over feeding two different meals. So we didn't get any good information out of that at all. We just got more misinformed, which is the standard fare. So that's what you have to understand if you're going to interpret meaningfully anything related to the effects of a manipulation and how it determines the things in our body. And this is true for all aspects of it. So next I'm going to go on to the glycogen studies. Okay, so keep all of that in mind whenever you're looking at anything, whether it be an article in a magazine or a scientific article, if you're capable of reading them and you look at them, but mostly you're doing interpretations of what other people read or think they've read or seen or tried to interpret in a scientific article and put it out for mass consumption of the public. Okay, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.